Hey everybody, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm the host of the show, Mark, and you're watching Whiskey Review number 204, Costco's Kirkland Signature Blended Scotch Whiskey. Probably about the least expensive uh, blended scotch whiskey on the market in the USA. Round about the least anyway. There could be a few competitors for that, uh, that bottom rung of price. And here in Korea where I live, I'm Canadian, but I live here in Korea. Uh, this is about 25,000 won for a 1.75 liter big, big glass bottle. Now, to its credit, it's got a cork. So that's pretty nice. Most of the whiskeys at this price range come with a screw top. Now, I'm not opposed to screw tops. In fact, I think that probably screw tops might actually be superior to cork for uh, let's say long keeping because the cork could eventually disintegrate. Now this is not a bottle that you're going to want to keep for a very long time at least uh, you know unless you really love uh, young blended scotch whiskey. Now let's go ahead and get this poured into my trusty Glencairn glass. There it comes. We're going to go with a hefty pour today that's probably about 35 to 40 milliliters. You get a good workout when you lift this, this sucker up. My goodness, that weighs round about, oh, seven pounds? I think it's about seven pounds, boy. You can get a couple of these and really make a good uh, workout with them. And then reward yourself afterwards. Uh, personally, I would probably reward myself with something a little bit better than uh, than this for a, a, a hard workout, but uh, this certainly does have a good purpose. It certainly does have a use. It certainly, it certainly does fit into the equation for people who like scotch, for people who like whiskey, for people who like to uh, have a drink um, every night. Absolutely, this is the kind of bottle that people could consume every single day and it really would not, um, you know, uh, leave them um, with nothing left at the end of the month. Very, very reasonable. Color-wise, let's have a look at the color. What have we got here? We've got pretty much a standard golden hue and uh, of course this has a little bit of added color because they want to keep the batches consistent batch after batch. And I've heard talk uh, online that the Kirkland Signature, which is made by Alexander Murray and Company, uh, that they have a uh, partnership with Tullibardine Distillery. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Uh, if so, that's really interesting because I have not yet tried. Have I tried? I think I've tried once. Yes, once and once only. Let's get on to the tasting, shall we? We're going to start out with the nosing, how it smells. Then we'll move on to the palate, how it tastes. And finally, the finish, the aftertaste. Okay? Before that, we'll have a short word from the YouTube sponsors right here. Welcome back. Kirkland Signature Blended Scotch Whiskey, 80 proof, 40% ABV, from Alexander Murray and Company. You're going to get an alcohol rush at the very beginning when you first pour this, uh, this dram. But persistence and patience will certainly lend itself to improving the smells in here. You'll be uh, delighted with a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon, A certain amount of ginger also. It's got a little bit of a spicy, uh, no, spicy nose to it. And yet there's something kind of like um, crazy glue or some sort of a, a really strong bond, uh, that kind of uh, um, industrial bond scent. So that's a little bit off-putting, but 
thank goodness that the vanilla and the cinnamon are the ones that are taking the uh, the front seat here hmm I'm losing my lights again already I still have not yet fixed these these puppies anyway I'll have to make this quick And the more you smell it, you get that little hint of something sweet, and it seems to me kind of like icing sugar. All right, well, enough of that. On to the palette. Cheers, everybody. The main event here is certainly the palette. Now let me just kill these lights. I'll be right back. All right, how is that? Hopefully okay. All right, let's get back into this now. As I said, not much to say about the nose on this one. But let's check out that palette one more time. Well, it's got a nice waxy mouthfeel to it. Kind of like the feeling of um, a lesser expensive chocolate bar, like just chocolate. Or perhaps uh, like the Easter Bunny chocolate. That sort of waxy uh, mouthfeel that it leaves on you, uh, in your mouth after you've, um, you've swallowed it. Flavor-wise, it's a mix of light brown sugar, some raisins, maybe some chocolate covered raisins like, um, uh, what were they called, uh, glossettes in Canada. Boy, I haven't seen those in Korea whatsoever. Mm hmm. Was it Nielsen? Nielsen glossettes? Anyway. Maybe a little bit of orange here also. Straight up orange. A little bit of um, um, a little bit of uh, raisins. Couldn't think of the word raisins for some reason right then. And um, and the finish. The finish is kind of long, but it reminds me of. Uh, what really gets me right here, actually, it reminds me of um, Beyond Ripe, but not rotten, okay? Beyond Ripe, uh, something like plums, which get quite sour in a uh, vinegary way uh, after they've been uh, beyond, after they're, after they're long beyond the, uh, uh, the ripened, the very ripened stage, you know, so the softness, you get the softness it's very juicy and sweet and then it's like a day or two later and you get this vinegar type of a flavor uh, coming through one more time here and a little bit of that icing sugar also remains um, in your mouth So adding about one and a half milliliters of water uh, to this glass, which is now only about 30 milliliters left. Let's see if anything changes. Nothing changes so much on the nose. Maybe I can smell a little bit more whiskeys, uh, a little bit more specifically malt whiskeys, um, maybe a little bit of honey. Now does this say at all where it's from? Uh, 
uh, just talks about the aged malt and grain whiskeys uh, in this uh, Kirkland Signature Scotch Whiskey are carefully blended. Mmm. I don't want to talk about the tasting notes because that always ends up uh, just overpowering my own notes in my mind. Yeah, a little bit more malty now on the nose. And a little bit more orange on the palate, also a little bit drier. The finish as well, pretty much the same, uh, but a little bit drier. And a little bit less of that sour note that I found in the, uh, the finish with uh, no water added. Hmm. I'm going to top that up just a little bit. Now, this bottle, by the way, is courtesy of my colleague, and his name is also Mark. So, Mark, there it is. Thank you very much. And uh, I think I had roughly, well, from the top, right, I think I got it new. So, I've had roughly, oh, about, uh, let's say, 400 milliliters maybe 500 so uh, hopefully you can make use of that perhaps uh, for this coming Chusok all right thanks Mark okay now then before I score it I want to do one more thing and that is to try it on the rocks so let me put some rocks into my rocks glass or old-fashioned glass whatever you like to call it should we do three I think one more would be good nice big one there we go all right in it goes now interestingly I think I'm probably the only um, whiskey reviewer, whiskey critic, whatever, whatever you want to call me, uh, that um, doesn't mind it with a bit of ice. Anyway, what do you think of that? Let me know. What do you think of trying the whiskey with ice as well as neat and with water? I probably wouldn't do that with every single uh, whiskey, but I think there are a few, such as this one, where most people, this is how they'll drink it. Or they'll drink it like this with a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of club soda added, or a little bit of cola added, a little bit of lemonade or something. Just wanna get this nice and cool before I try it. Those ice cubes are melting away. And hey, it's, uh, it's September. In fact, uh, today is Friday. It's September the 1st over here. Probably by the time you watch this, it's going to be around September 10th. I'm a little bit behind. And I think, as I mentioned before, I'm going to start cutting out uh, the editing on many of my videos because I just can't keep up with the workload. It would sure be nice if I had the capital that I could hire an editor, but that's not gonna happen. Not anytime soon. Will it ever happen? That remains to be seen. Let's find out. Okay, so now, then the nose, the glue, that um, crazy glue scent is gone. It's mild, it's malty, uh, vanilla, cinnamon, not so much, nah, not, not as much cinnamon now as before, but definitely the vanilla is there. All right, and uh, cheers to you one more time. Mmm.
becomes a little bit of a tart event. A little bit more of that orange. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, still, I notice the uh, raisins, the light brown sugar. Mm. But especially the orange is making itself known here on the palette with the ice added. And the finish also uh, maybe just somewhat improved. So interestingly, I think I would prefer this on the rocks than, uh, than neat. So why don't you tell me what you think of this one? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And now we're going to get on to the whisk... Uh, I'd love... Mm. Why don't you tell me what you think of Kirkland Signature Blended Scotch Whiskey? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, now, we're going to get on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for this one. First of all, we're going to have another short word from the YouTube sponsors right here. Welcome back. Let's get on to the scoring, shall we? The Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Kirkland Signature Blended Scotch Whiskey made by Alexander Murray and Company is going to be 72 out of 100. 72 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Kirkland Signature Blended Scotch Whiskey. So what, what, what can you do with this? I think it's great for camping. I think it's great for uh, events where you have a whole lot of family or uh, random friends coming over uh, that just want to make a mixed drink with their whiskey or they want to fill up their glass with ice and, uh, and try it uh, that way. I think it's perfect for that. Of course, you're going to want to have, make sure you have something nice um, in the back of your cupboard that you can share with those one or two uh, real scotch-loving friends of yours uh, that you have. Uh, something like, for example, what do I have down here? Um, something like, hmm, oh, something like Ben Nivis. That would be something that would really wow your friends. They probably never tried it, and uh, if you're able to get your hands on a bottle of it, yeah. Uh, you know, for the regular friends who just want to have a, uh, a cold drink, a cocktail, that's perfect. But for the one who you want to impress, you take them into, uh, I don't know, maybe out onto your patio and give them a little Glencairn glass full of Ben Nivis. They would like that. This is really good stuff. Okay, so thanks for watching. Now don't forget about the Whiskey Whistle YouTube channel that you're watching now. I'd sure love it if you subscribed. You can do that right over here. But also there's a Twitter channel. There is a Instagram account. And there's also a Facebook page for Whiskey Whistle. So get involved. I'd love to see your pictures on especially the Facebook page. So why not uh, like that one? And then you can upload a picture. Tell me what you bought recently. What do you love? What are you collecting? What are you looking for? I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of those topics. All right. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'd love to see you for the next review. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe. And don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.